Evidence has been gathered, a jury has been selected, and now court is officially in session for the trial of Lori Vallow. And it seems not a person in the world is on the mother's side. There's no one there for Lori. Nobody. She's got sisters, brothers, family, mom. She's got lots of family. They're not there. Lori has been charged with taking the lives of those dearest to her while on a destructive path against anybody that stood between herself, the man she loved, and their slow march toward the end of the world. She threatened to you? Yes. He said, um, I think I'm being their fall guy. You have any enemies, any anybody that you... And as the trial exposes all the vile details of the case that brought FBI agents and law enforcement to a pet cemetery almost three years ago. Right now we are following breaking news in Idaho where Rexburg police say human remains have been discovered. How far will this mother go to justify her alleged crimes? Tell me right now that Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, is on your side. I can tell you that. Four years ago, that's when the name Doomsday Mom was first spoken in the same hushed tones reserved for the most feared figures of fiction, folklore, and religion. There was only one difference. Lori Vallow was human. More than that, she was a mother. Keyword, was. Lori was a mother. As a nationwide search and a change.org petition to make her responsible for her missing children adjusted, that title was up in the air. Now, flash forward to 2023, and a new petition is circulating the interweb, a plea for cameras to capture Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell's trial court proceedings. So, it seemed the mother and this mystery man's fates were about to be placed in the hands of the court, where prying eyes had been shut out in an effort to maintain a fair trial. Their plea, not guilty. Their alleged crime, well, in the eyes of many, unforgivable. It disgusts me when mur- takes place. A special thing hits you when you know it's children that have had their lives snatched away from them. As Lori's attorneys requested a speedy trial, she was first on the docket. And on April 3rd, 2023, the Doomsday Moms trial began. Jury selection in the murder trial of Lori Vallow started today at the Ada County Courthouse. Vallow has been in jail for over three years after the pandemic delayed proceedings related to things like competency. Since that time, the case has taken some bizarre twists and turns, making it one of the most notable murders in Idaho history. But to understand how Lori got here, first, you have to understand her past. See, back in 2006, long before Lori was the subject of Dateline episodes, Netflix documentaries, and news bulletins, the California native was a far cry from the apocalypse mama that stands before us today. No, Lori seemed more concerned with her present than any impending end to the world. She was a newlywed after all, unlucky marriage number four and blissfully unaware of the sirens that wailed from the near future after marrying Charles Vallow. If anything, the future was promising. Lori's new businessman hubby had stepped in as a father figure to her son and daughter from previous marriages, Colby and Tylee Ryan. And by 2014, a new member was added to the budding household, Charlie's nephew, Joshua Jackson, or JJ for short. JJ was formerly in the custody of his grandmother and Charles' sister, Kay Woodcock, and her husband, Larry Woodcock. But due to their age and Lori's patience with JJ's autism, they handed off guardianship to the younger couple. That year, the Vallos moved to Hawaii, and here, surrounded by a lull of ocean waves, Lori found solace in another world, one invented by a man named Chad Daybell. Chad was a husband and father of five who authored books of a peculiar genre targeted to Mormon readers, doomsday fiction. And while Lori's interest in the genre was niche, it wasn't abnormal. Call it the end of times, Judgment Day, or Armageddon. Predicting the day a cataclysmic event will wipe out all humanity has been a preoccupation of scientists and religious leaders alike. It's necessary only to open the newspaper to see headlines which, in the eyes of some readers of Revelation, will be sure proof that the biblical prophecies are coming true at last. A major sign that the day of judgment might have just happened. Check this out. It takes less than two minutes for the beautiful world around us to go up in flames. On May 21, there's gonna be a terrific earthquake, way, way greater 
than anything that the Earth has ever experienced. But by the time the Vallos moved to Arizona in 2017, Lori's interest in Doomsday could no longer be excused as casual, quirky, or offbeat. She was an eccentric, and it was Lori's obsession with the end she believed was near that connected her with a tight-knit group of like-minded individuals, eventually including her hero, Chad Daybell. The two were first introduced in December 2018, after both appearing on Time to Warrior Up, a podcast hosted by the doomsday group Preparing a People. The next year, Lori met the author at a conference hosted by the same group. Their connection was instantaneous, and according to what former member of their inner circle Melanie Gibb recently told the court, spiritually interwined. She shared with me that he told her that they had been married in another time period. And despite having separate partners, the two doomsday enthusiasts allegedly began to have intimate relations, an affair Lori excused on religious grounds. She explained that because they had been married in multiple lives and they had a mission together that it was okay. Plus, neither Chad nor Lori believed they had Tammy and Charles in their way for much longer. They believed that their spouses would pass away. With the idea being that once their spouses passed away, they could be together? Correct. Yes, fate would take care of their spouses. And if their predestined future didn't come to fruition on its own, well, perhaps that meant events required a little nudge for everything to fall into place. Or at least, that's what Chad's alleged words to a friend made it sound like. He leaned forward and he goes, I just don't think my plan can move forward till the spouses are dead. And I looked at him and I said, what? But while their union was stalled by circumstance, this didn't stop the author and fan from taking their obsession with the end of the world to new, disturbing, and cultish heights. See, Lori and Chad might have borrowed ideology from various doomsday groups in Chad's state of Idaho, but the belief system their group followed was reportedly the unique creation of one individual, Chad Daybell. And according to friend Melanie Gipp, Chad's religion didn't just position himself and Lori as members of the 144,000, a group of people prophesized to lead humanity through the end of days. They were the leaders. Would that be a position of pretty significant power? Absolutely. But why were Chad and Lori's inner circle so eager to believe the couple? Well, according to the testimony of former member of the group, Ziluma Pastinas, Chad and Lori had a knack for making others feel special and powerful. And Lori's brother, Alex Cox, was no exception. Chad had told Alex that he had come only once to this earth and the sole purpose for him coming to this earth was so that he could be Lori's protector and defender. And it seemed Alex took the task seriously. If his purchasing 46 firearms between August and October 2019 was any indication. As for how the group knew who they can trust, Chad reportedly invented a light and dark scale to measure precisely where a person lands in terms of being an alleged light or dark spirit. And Lori and Chad had a strange term for those who fell on the darkest end. Zombies. Unlike the traditional depiction of the living dead, their conceptualization of the mythological entity moved, looked, and behaved like a regular person. The difference had to do with the soul, which had been overcome by alleged dark spirits. And unfortunately for Lori, the man who lived in her house, ate at her table, and shared her bed was allegedly exhibiting the telltale signs of zombification. That's right. The body of Charles Vallow had been inhabited by an alleged dark spirit and one that needed to be taken care of. By January 2019, Charles was unsettled by the changes he witnessed in his wife, and he believed it was time to involve law enforcement in the matter. He informed authorities of the increasingly extreme beliefs Lori had adopted over the past years, claiming she believed she was preparing for Christ's second coming, that she had past lives, and that she was immortal. She's lost her mind. And Charles didn't think Lori's new mindset made her quirky. It made her a danger. He alleged his wife had transferred $35,000 of their money to an unknown bank account, attempted to intimidate him by claiming she would take his life, and she believed Charles wasn't Charles anymore. I think some Mick Schneider. Who's Mick Schneider? I have no idea. Okay. It's the name she used. I don't know where it came from. And Charles believed his life wasn't the only one at stake. So how does she pose a threat to your children? I don't know what she's going to do with them. I don't know if she's going to flee with them, she's going to hurt them. Unfortunately, nothing could be done, not for the children and not for Charles. 
The next month, Charles filed for divorce on July 11, 2019. The ex-husband also went to Lori's house with the plan to drop off their son JJ at school. But oh, how quickly plans fall apart. Charles noticed Lori's brother, Alex Cox, was in the house and texted to inform Lori's other brother, Adam Cox, the only other member of the family that would hear his side of the situation. They are planning something, Adam replied. And it appeared he may have been right because about 10 minutes after their text exchange, the pull of a trigger ended Charles' life. According to Alex, Lori, and Tylee's police testimonies, Alex had ended Charles' life in self-defense after Charles approached him with a baseball bat. But whether it was Alex waiting 43 minutes to call emergency or Lori smiling as she spoke with police, something about the incident seemed off. She doesn't even ask if Charles is okay. Your husband just died. And that night, Chad Daybell placed a call to a mortuary using a different spelling for his last name. D-A-B-A-L, Daybell. Chad claimed he wanted to cremate his uncle and was looking for the prices to ship these remains. Not out of Idaho, but out of the state Charles had passed away in, Arizona. As for Lori, Tylee, and JJ, well, by September 2019, they were leaving the Grand Canyon State behind for greener pastures. The Vallos, along with Lori's brother Alex and her recently divorced niece, Melanie Bordreau, all moved to the same apartment complex in Rexburg, Idaho, a town Chad Daybell had claimed as the New Jerusalem. Tylee had planned to move in with a friend in Arizona, but as the overprotective older sister, Could have a video of my child? Your child? My child. She decided to stay close to JJ. Then came September 8th, 2019, the day Lori, Tylee, JJ, and Alex visited Yellowstone National Park and immortalized the trip with a photo an image that would become the interest of the FBI, as it was the last photograph evidence of Tylee before the teenager disappeared. And looking back, Lori's friends couldn't help but recall how the mother had started describing the 16-year-old prior to her disappearance. She said that Tylee had been uh, possessed by um, evil spirit or a demon, and she called it um, Hillary. The morning after their trip to the park, Alex's cell phone GPS traced his location to an odd area to spend two hours, Chad Daybell's backyard. After he left, Chad texted his wife Tammy something equally strange. I spotted a big raccoon along the fence. I hurried and got my and he was still walking along. I got close enough that one did the trick. He is now in our pet cemetery. Fun times. As for JJ, well, a photo from Lori's iCloud was taken of the seven-year-old in red PJs on September 22nd, 2019. There were also friends staying with Lori that night, Melanie Gibb and her boyfriend, David Warwick, who witnessed Alex carry JJ into the apartment. But during Chad Daybell's preliminary hearing in 2020, David testified that Lori had told him something strange when he asked to see JJ the next morning. She said that he was uh, being a zombie. And what happened to zombies? Lori's brother made them disappear. She just said that he was out of control, so she had Alex come and get him. That day, Alex's phone again placed him in Chad's backyard, but only for 17 minutes. And after the two Vallow children went missing, one after the other, the Daybell household quietly lost a member of its own. On October 19th, 2019, Chad's wife Tammy passed away in her sleep, or at least that's what Chad and his son Garth claimed on their emergency call. However, 10 days before she passed, Tammy had been on the phone with 911. Tammy was in distress. A masked stranger had just pelted something at her in her driveway. Paintballs? Or so Tammy believed. Zeluma Pastinez recently told the court that she was with Lori that day. In fact, they were attempting to cast a dark spirit out of Tammy when Lori received a call that left her agitated. After she got off the phone, what um, did she say to you? She said, idiot, can't do anything right by himself. However, the Daybell children refused an autopsy. Their mother had been in ill health and the coroner believed her passing was the result of natural causes. That was enough for them. She would get out of breath very quickly and would get very tired 
and she started going to bed very early at night. But whether Tammy's loss of life was due to natural or unnatural causes, there are some things the rules of etiquette request you don't just do after the loss of a loved one, like marry someone else weeks later. And Chad and Lori's wedding on November 5th, 2019 wasn't just seen as uncouth. With no children in sight, it was suspicious. On November 26, 2019, Kay and Larry Woodcock, who hadn't heard from their grandson, JJ, since a 35-second FaceTime in August, requested a welfare check on JJ. But when Rexford police knocked on Lori Vallow's door, there was no JJ in sight. In the body cam footage of that visit recently played for jurors, the mother had an excuse for JJ's absence. She is telling the officers that JJ is with her friend Melanie in Arizona, and she is blaming everything on Kay Woodcock coming after her, trying to sue her. And after police left, Chad and Lori were quick to allegedly call Melanie Gibb and feed her a story to tell authorities. However, JJ was not with Melanie in Arizona, and eventually, the friend confirmed this with police. Later, Melanie called the couple for an explanation, an interaction that was recorded and presented in court at Chad Daybell's preliminary hearing. And lying about JJ's whereabouts wasn't the only gripe Melanie had with Lori and Chad. There was also the growing list of those tied to the couple coming to tragic ends. Tammy dies, and then your husband died, and then, this, and then he's missing. It just doesn't sound like God's plan to me. To this thinly veiled accusation, Lori had one response. You know me, Mel. You know me. It was the same sentiment Lori used to reassure her mother after police realized Tylee was also missing and a nationwide search for the children was launched. First thing she said to me was, Mom, you know me. You know I'm taking care of my kids. But instead of joining the search efforts or providing answers, Lori and Chad simply left. In December 2019, the two went back to Hawaii, where they luxuriated at a condo in Kauai on a childless vacation. But back in Idaho, investigators had become suspicious of the couple's connection to the all-too-convenient passing of Tammy Daybell. The late Mrs. Daybell's body was exhumed for autopsy, an announcement that was shortly followed by another life lost. On November 4th, 2019, Chad did a blessing for Alex, where he called Lori's brother a true warrior and made an eerie statement. You have already assisted us in ways that can never be repaid. As one follower of Lori's trial pointed out, this sounds like a sacrifice instead of a blessing. And this might have been true because two weeks later, Alex Cox departed from life. But Tammy and Alex weren't the only ones tangled in Chad and Lori's web to come to untimely ends. In total, there were five strange incidents, three deaths surrounding the couple, and two lives almost taken. One, in 2018, Lori's third husband, Joseph Ryan, passed away due to a heart attack. Two and three, Charles Vallow and Tammy Daybell both lost their lives in mysterious circumstances after Lori and Chad began their affair. 4. An attempt on the life of Brandon Boudreaux, the husband of Lori's niece and apartment complex neighbor, Melanie Boudreaux, or make that ex-husband. Brandon and Melanie's marriage had disintegrated shortly after Melanie allegedly became fervently religious, ranting and preparing for some impending event. Oh yeah, the apocalypse. On October 2nd, 2019, Amid custody disagreements between Brandon and Melanie, a jeep tried to pull off a drive-by on the ex-husband. You have any enemies? Any anybody that you? I just went through a divorce. Um, oh. There is some crazy stuff that happened with her and her husband, but I don't. I would hope that has nothing to do with this. Thankfully, Brandon was unscathed, and police were able to trace who the vehicle was registered to: the already deceased Charles Vallow. And while Joseph Ryan's passing was reopened in 2021, only to be concluded as natural causes, Tammy Daybell's autopsy results, which were recently revealed in court, weren't so innocent. And this jury heard today that she died of asphyxiation. What about strange incident number five? That would be Alex Cox and his passing was also attributed to natural causes, but his wife wasn't so sure. Zeluma, 
member of Lori and Chad's inner circle, had only married Alex two weeks before he lost his life. Their wedding was one day apart from another sudden union between Lori's niece Melanie and Ian Palowski, both matches set up by Lori and Chad themselves. But what was the rush? Well, you know, just the end of the world, which according to the noticeably miscalculated projection of the group was scheduled for July 22, 2020. In court, Zeluma testified that just before his passing, she probed Alex about whether he was involved in what happened to Tammy. He said, um, I think I'm being their fall guy. He said, um, Zeluma, either I am a man of God or I am not. And as the toll of lives lost in Lori and Chad's wake mounted, it seemed the couple's holiday in the sun was coming to an end. In February 2020, after Lori failed to produce her children as demanded by a court order, the mother was arrested in Hawaii and extradited to Idaho. By June 9, 2020, the FBI and law enforcement were on Chad Daybell's property, searching for a grim conclusion to the nightmarish saga. As they looked, Chad rang Lori. And funny thing about jail phone calls, they're recorded. Good evening, sir. Again. Sir, in the overgrown yard, beneath a tree, there was an area where the grass was slightly shorter. Authorities started digging, eventually hitting rocks and a strong odor. Beneath wood paneling, there lay JJ's body, still wearing his red PJs. The seven-year-old was wrapped in a plastic bag bound in duct tape. Duct tape that upon further inspection would reveal key evidence, a hair, and one that didn't belong to JJ. Despite the decomposition, police could still easily identify the remains. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for his sister. While the raccoon from Chad's text was not found during the search of the author's pet cemetery, burnt and dismembered human remains were identified as Tylee. Later on, flowers and signs to commemorate the children were placed by the property, a welcome site to Kay and Larry Woodcock, who came to Rexburg to visit the location where their grandson was found. I just want you to know I came here to one thing. That's, that's the sea world. And that brings us to the trial, where prosecution has argued that Lori's motivations were as simple as it gets. Money power, and that's what this case is about. To get what she wanted, Lori just had to remove obstacles, and unfortunately for her children and Tammy Daybell, they were in the way. The mother had been profiting off of Tylee's social insurance since her passing, and was also in possession of a document with details about caring for JJ that stated, benefits could be lost if any child passes. And when it came to Charles, it appeared Lori also might have been after financial gain. Lori was talking about being out of money at that point in time and how she thought that she was the beneficiary to his $1 million life insurance policy. Turns out, she wasn't. And text messages sent to Chad read by Detective Nathan Duncan in court exposed the mother's reaction to the news. I just got the letter from the insurance company saying that I am not the beneficiary. It's a spear through my heart. Still. Both Lori and Chad were able to reap the benefits of Tammy's passing after her life insurance was maxed out to $430,000. As for Lori's defense, their argument hinged on the fact that religion, however bizarre it appears, is a freedom that the mother hadn't changed until she met Chad and that she wasn't present when these lives were allegedly ended. Jim Aldridge, Lori's attorney, said to the jury, the prosecutor doesn't know exactly how these happened, so they shouldn't expect you to make that determination. In legal terms, this is reasonable doubt, the standard of proof used in criminal trials, which requires jurors to be firmly convinced of the defendant's guilt before a conviction can occur. If there is any significant uncertainty about the defendant's guilt, this is considered reasonable doubt and should lead to a not guilty verdict. But of course, Words weren't the only thing jury members had to contend with. They were also shown graphic images of the remains found in Chad's property, while grandfather Larry Woodcock attempted to muffle his cries so as not to disrupt the court. He sobbed throughout the entire 
uh, time that those photos were on the screen. And, and Chris, they were terrible. They were just uh, about some of the worst I've ever seen, and, and that's saying something. As for Lori, the mother refused to look at the images, and her attorneys asked if she could be excused so that as not to further damage her mental state. Ultimately, the judge said no, so she had to stay in there while these autopsy photos were on the screen. But was the mother's reaction one of distress or guilt? After all, the trial recently revealed the DNA match to that stray hair found on the duct tape covering JJ. The strand belonged to the boy's mother, Lori Vallow, a finding that would take an astronomic leap of faith to dispute. The probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual with that partial DNA profile is 1 in 71 billion. But that wasn't the only evidence found on JJ. There was also the plastic bag, which once tested, exposed a secret of its own. Someone had left behind fingerprints, but who? Well, this time, it wasn't Lori. And both of those latent prints matched the known prints of who? Alexander Lamar Cox. Alex Cox, Lori's brother and dedicated protector, was again tied to the scene of the crime. And while Tylee's state meant investigators would be hard-pressed to find trace evidence that linked anyone to her passing, that didn't mean there weren't clues to be found elsewhere. See, investigators discovered Tylee's DNA somewhere it shouldn't have been, on gardening tools, a pickaxe and shovel from Chad Daybell's shed. There was also an odd search found on Chad's Google account, made the day before Tylee's presumed passing. The user of this account um, looked up um, what the wind direction was going to be for the next day. The direction was south-southwest, meaning if Chad planned to burn anything that day, the smoke would have blown into the field, hiding any unusual smells far away from any neighbors. But this was far from the only incriminating information Chad Daybell made the mistake of leaving in his digital trail. In court, former FBI Special Agent Douglas Hart exposed Chad and Lori's intimate tech sessions, which started shortly after they met at the Doomsday Conference in late 2018, just weeks before Tylee and JJ went missing. Douglas Hart also exposed text messages between the lovebirds when they appeared to count down Tylee, JJ, and Tammy's descent from light to dark beings using Chad's scale. Reaching zero meant they were getting closer to passing away. They also claimed Tylee and Tammy got switched or possessed. Do you think there is a perfectly orchestrated plan to take the children? Lori texted Chad. And we just have to wait for it to be carried out? I feel lost, like I should be doing something to help. Chad soothed her worries, texting. You are doing everything right, my love. There is a plan being orchestrated for the children. The implication was clear. We don't get this in other cases, not any that I can remember, where adults are plotting and planning how to get rid of a, a teenage girl and a seven-year-old child. Lori also made the mistake of texting her brother Alex Cox about Z's, referring to zombies. We are trying to get to the bottom of what we need to do to eliminate them completely. I'm sure you will be told also. Seeming to suggest Alex had a part to play too. This text was sent on September 3, 2019, just five days before the last photo of Tylee was taken at Yellowstone National Park on a day trip with JJ and Alex. Jurors also heard tense phone calls Lori received while in prison. One was from her sister, Summer Shiflett, who had previously defended Lori's innocence, but after the discovery of the bodies, wasn't so sure. Lori stuck to her same defense. You know me, Summer. But for Summer, who would have taken JJ and Tylee in a heartbeat if her sister had only asked, this wasn't enough. You went up to Hawaii and were dancing on the beach while your kids are in the ground? And then there was the call from Lori's only surviving child, Colby Ryan, who accused his mother of not only ending his siblings' lives, but covering it up by sending him texts from Tylee's phone after her passing. However, Lori appeared more amused over her son's confrontation than ashamed. This is funny. This is funny. Lori responded that nobody understands, nobody except for Tylee and JJ, who know the truth and love her. You don't know what happened. Why? Why don't you know, Mom? Oh, because I was kept in the dark to protect me? You don't know need to protect me, my little siblings. Before the call ended, the 27-year-old left his mother with one final remark. 
You ripped my heart out and you ripped out everyone in this family's heart out. I'm going to be in Idaho next, this week. You need to look me in my eye, mom. Look me in my eye. And Idaho was exactly where Colby was, not just witnessing the trial unfold, but an active part of it. When he took that stand, Lori, who had been criticized for her stoic, bratty, and at times giddy court demeanor, for the first time, shed tears. According to attorney Daryl Cohen, this was likely a reality check for the mother. I suspect these were the first bits of emotion that were real. She doesn't want to hear what she has become. She doesn't want to hear what they see she became. And on May 12th, the jury delivered their verdict. Answer, guilty. Lori Vallow was found guilty of all charges, including conspiracy to end the lives of Tammy Daybell, Tylee, and JJ, as well as ultimately ending the lives of the two children and the theft of their social security payments. And while Lori will be sentenced in approximately three months, it appears this verdict will be just one of many. Chad Daybell will be up for trial next, and more is at stake than the doomsday author's freedom if found guilty concerning the lives of Tammy Daybell, JJ, and Tylee. Idaho is one of 27 states that still allows capital punishment, and in August 2021, the prosecution in the case announced they plan to argue for the death penalty. Lori has also been separately charged in Arizona with conspiring to end the life of her ex-husband and her now deceased brother, Alex Cox. So while Lori may feel she's been unfairly persecuted, it seems the doomsday mom's time in the hot seat has only just begun. After years of mystery and silence surrounding Tylee and JJ, it appears the verdict provided some semblance of peace to those who needed it most. Power and greed, that's all it was. And JJ, Papa misses you, I miss you. As the trial of Lori Vallow wove a disturbing tale of motherly love lost. I thought I could trust you. I thought that you were a completely different person that even in the end provoked no emotional response from the woman found guilty on all charges. Lori was totally unaffected when the verdict was read. This is the story of Lori Vallow, the mother who conspired and committed the unthinkable.